just sounds not right. It needs to go patang, patang. This channel is made possible in part by Morning Fame, smarter analytics to simplify YouTube growth. Use the link on your screen right now to get your first month free. And by TubeBuddy, your best friend on the road to YouTube success. Use the affiliate link on your screen to sign up today. Greetings programs, Atari here, you there, and this is not a Nintendo Zapper, but it is a reasonable facsimile thereof. So this is actually a Tommy Zap gun. Uh, it is a replica of the original NES Zapper uh, because I did not want to tear apart a real Zapper, but they should work uh, in the exact same way. It's more or less the same dimensions. Um, it is definitely a cheaper plastic, is definitely a, a much, much lighter plastic, and of course, that's, that's not right. Um, so, as part of Project Quick Shot, I'm going to be uh, building an interesting little version of the Zapper. You can watch the whole project if you click that card up in the corner. But for now, what I need to do is I need to open this guy up. I want to show you how it works. This is fairly accurate with the texturing. This does not weigh as much as a zapper, and it's just, it bothers me. <laughs> it just bothers me. But what, I mean, for five bucks, you know, five bucks on Amazon, if you don't have a zapper and you just want to mess around with something, by all means, but I mean, if you want the full retro experience, you really got to get the real deal. Okay, so those are all of our screws. Our screws over here, so we should just be able to pull this guy apart. There we go. Oh, it looks like this actually. You know, of course, this is a different piece of molded plastic here on the, this gray section. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so terrible and cheap, but whatever. There we go. Okay, so this is essentially the inside of an NES Zapper. It's the exact same construction as the, uh, the original, uh, with the exception of the cheaper plastic on the inside. Um, I can't even tell. I don't see any manufacturing marks, so I can't even tell what kind of plastic this is. Um, I could do the old AVE test and, and heat it with soldering iron to see where it melts, but um, not today because I just got my brand new soldering iron set up and I don't really want to mess around with it. So anyway, um, essentially what you've got here is you have a lens and you have a um, you have a uh, photodiode. So this is a light sensitive diode. And what happens? What happens when you pull the trigger here? Of course, it closes this micro switch. Uh, dual pole, interesting. Dual pole switch. Um, so it closes the switch, sends a signal out this red line here pulses the diode to see if it is high or low. Uh, and then that comes back along this other red line, goes out to the Nintendo, compares that to see where the light is, if it's actually shining at the light. So essentially there's a, there's a timing issue. I'll explain this more in detail later. I'm just kind of going off of, you know, top of my head. Uh, basically, it, 
the Nintendo knows where the um, it knows where the light is supposed to be. Uh, finds out if the light is actually picked up by this. So it basically pulls the diode to see if it gets the right pattern. If it gets the right pattern, then it registers a hit. If it doesn't, it registers a miss uh, in whatever game you're playing. So that's essentially it. It's such a simple, such a simple little device, such a simple little design. And we're going to make it unnecessarily complicated <laughs> as part of Project Quick Shot. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll look at that in a little bit. In the meantime, social media over here. Subscribe down here. Here is the rest of the Project Quick Shot playlist. Watch the whole thing start to finish. Find out how all this stuff works. And of course, down here is the newsletter. Sign up today. Find out all the cool stuff that's happening here and around the shop. And until next time, my name is Atari. Tally ho, y'all. <laughs>